Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to be in the house. Of... Oh. Sorry, I'll just take this off now. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord again another Sunday and to be here to give God worship. I love the presence of the Lord and to be in the presence of his people. And this morning as we come to worship, before we start, I'm going to go through all the bits and pieces that might hinder worship a little bit, so I'm going to do that now. My name is Bernadine Bailey and I'm your moderator this morning. Um, but I'd just like to just go through our bits and pieces regarding the government guidelines. So just to remind us all, and it's lovely to see you all wearing your masks. Thank the Lord for that. Um, that we're all wearing our masks and our mouths and our nose are covered. Um, it's also to remind us that we are doing social distancing. So please um, take note of that as we are leaving and as we're moving around as well. Please can we follow the one-way system around the church, especially in the sanctuary. Please can we remember also to um, just respect the ushers while they are working with us, to follow their direction, whether now or when we're leaving the building afterwards, and to um, remember to keep our two meter distance and to sanitize our hands and stuff like that. That's those things Oh, And please can we also remember at the end of service if we can leave our tithes and offerings in the buckets that would be provided at the doors. Um, and I think that's all. Thank you. We are here to worship Almighty God. We are here to worship Almighty God. Do you agree with me? Yes. yes. So I want to get those other bits out of the way so that we can truly, truly worship Almighty God. Nothing should hinder our worship. Nothing. The fact that we're wearing masks shouldn't hinder our worship. The fact that we are distancing shouldn't hinder our worship. We've come in this morning to lift up the name of Jesus. We cannot sing, even though I was just doing it under my mask. So we can hum, <laughs> we can do it, you know, quietly and gently. But the, the presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen. We are in this place. Yes. And because we are here, the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. So I'm with encouraging us this morning, whether we are in the sanctuary or whether we are out there in the media, web, whatever that we are in, you know, that we remember that we are here to worship Almighty God. Amen. I've come out, we have come out with one purpose and one purpose only. That is to lift up holy hands and to open our hearts and our minds to receive from the Lord and also to give the Lord our worship. So this morning, I'm encouraging us all in the building and outside of the building, worship Almighty God. Amen. Give him our praise. Amen. Let him know that on the COVID, all of us are and no COVID, we are still his children. Yeah. And the children of a mighty and an amazing and a living God, chosen by him to be in this place this morning and wherever we are to give him worship. So we're going to start by asking Brother Crouch to come and open us up in prayers and to just take us before Almighty God as we honour him this morning. Hallelujah. I just want to say good morning to all my brothers and sisters. Father, today I stretch my hands this morning. By no other help we know but thee. And if thou should do thyself from me, in where in all shall we go? Father, we thank you for this privilege that have given unto us this one this morning, that we can come in your presence once more to give thanks. Father, we thank you from the bottom of our heart, Lord, for this privilege. So many this morning would have liked to have this opportunity, but they cannot get out of bed or for different reasons. So as we come this morning, Lord, help us to rejoice and be glad 
Indeed, Lord, you know that you are our Savior. You promised that you would never leave us, neither you would never forsake us. And through this time of lockdown of this virus, Lord, we prove you so much. Lord, how good you are to us. And this morning we can gather, each one together this morning, to call upon your holy divine name Amen. and to give you thanks, Lord, for what you have done for Amen. us, Lord. Amen. Help us, Lord, to continue Amen. to reach out to you Amen. because you is all we need. Amen. When everything else fails, yes. Lord, you never fail. Amen. And as you promise that you will never leave us, neither you will never forsake us. Oh, what a foundation. Lord, that we can stand this morning together Amen. and to give thanks for what you have done for us, Lord. Amen. Lord, we praise your name. We Amen. glorify you. Amen. Lord, that we can come. Amen. Lord, today we pray for wonder, Lord. Amen. Lord, that the windows of heaven will open, Lord, yes. and that your blessing will come down, Lord. Yes. Yes. Father, we pray that you take your the place among us this morning, Lord. You will be the center, Lord, yes. that our high will fix upon yes. you, Jesus. Yes. Lord, have your way this morning. Mm -hmm. Not our way, your way, Father. Yes. Let us yes. give you our all today, mm -hmm. and not just a part. Mm -hmm. Father, our time are in your hands. Yes. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. Know that you are our Redeemer, you are our Master and our Friend. And Father, if ever we need you, Lord is now. Lord, when we see what is going on across the world, Lord, today we have to cry out to you. Lord, have your way. Have your way, Lord, as we go through this time of testing, Lord. Lord, you is hard to me. Help us to reach out to you, Father. Mm. At times the guilt going seems to be so rough, yes. but help us to keep our yes. high fix on you, Lord, yes. because knowing that you are in control. Yes. Lord, we bless you again this morning. Yes. Come, Lord Jesus, come yes. and tarry here with us this yes. morning, Lord. Please remember those today that would have liked to be here, Lord, but for different reasons they cannot. Lord, please meet them just where they are this morning, yeah. that they will know your presence around them. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, I thank you for your grace. Lord, we thank you for your praise, Lord. We thank you for the help. We thank you for the strength, Lord. Please have your way today, Lord. We pray that this morning, Lord, we will see you at work, Lord. As we come here this morning, Lord, we might see you in a way that we have never experienced yes, before. Lord, Jesus. Lord, we have. Yes, Lord, please have your way now, Lord. Yes. Come, Lord Jesus, come and tarry yes. here with us now. Yes. Lord, as we commit each and every one into your hands this morning, yes. and just to ask a blessing in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 But um, again, good morning, church. <laughs> again, good morning, church. And welcome into this place, the New Testament Church of God of Leeds. Welcome. And those of you who are watching us online, I welcome you as well this morning that our worship and our praise will give honour and glory to God this morning, that He and He alone will be glorified in this place. So, welcome. I want to remind um, you all that. And the month, this month theme is Who Am I? Who Am I? And you know, looking at this theme, it, um, it, it's this, this, this two part to it for me. There is me asking myself, Who Am I? 
but also as well, God could be asking us, who am I? Because in this time of pandemic and everything, um, when our focus is like there, God is saying to us, who am I? In the pandemic, who am I? In your lives, who am I? So it's a question that can be answered from above and from here as well. Then. Who am I? But for me, um, just thinking about this theme and thinking about this morning, it swoop up many things for me. You know, it swoop about the fact of who am I? I know that I am chosen. I know that I am a child of God. I know that the Lord has given me many promises. I know that his word is light and light and food and lamp and everything else. I know who I am, Bernadine Bailey, a child of God. Amen. And that's the question that God is asking every one of us. We, um, it's not a collective question. It's not about the fact that you, we attend UT Free Stilly Road. It's an individual question that God wants us all to look at and answer. Who am I? Who are you? And who is God to you? And, and even in this time here, there's a battle for worship. You know, we're coming out um, to be in the presence of the Lord that we hadn't done for a long time. But still, there's a battle going on for our worship. And God wants our worship. Matter of fact, he demands it. You know, that we give him worship, whether we're at home or we're here. He wants us to give him our worship. So this morning, as we look at the theme of who am I, a question um, for us as Christians to, um, and for us to consider, who am I? Chosen, loved, blessed, honoured. God dances and rejoices over each and every one of us. Do we remember these things? He does. His word tells us that he rejoices over us. So let us give him that praise this morning. So right now we're going to be listening to a song um, um, that's going to be on the overhead. Um, it's, an old, um, it's an old song, an old song that the, the choir used to sing years ago, an old song that a lot of the older ones will remember. It's called... Um, it's all right now. You all remember that? It's all right now for the young men I say. Oh, no singing, sorry. <laughs> Please put the song on.
we're not saying that life is the same as it used to be. We're not saying that it's, it's as it used to be. We're not saying it's how we would like it to be. But what we're saying is that because we have Jesus Christ, he makes us to be at peace in our situations. That's what we're saying. It's not as we would like it, but God gives us his peace and his reassurance that even though we're going through situations, he is there with us and it is okay. It's okay that we're going through right now. I'm going to ask us to um, all stand together. Please, can we all stand up? I'd like us to stand. Um, and I'd like us to look inside ourselves. Take a look inside. Take a look at what's happened to us this week, um, whether it's been a good week or a not so good week. I want us to really, really take a look at ourselves what's going on in our minds right now, what's going on in our hearts right now. I want us to look at ourselves. Look at what's going on around us. Look at what's happening within us. And just open our mouths under our masks and give the Lord our needs, our thanksgiving. Give him our wants, give him our fears, give him our pressures. You know, and sometimes as the way we think, as getting us down, we know that there's a lot going on right now about mental health. We know that. We know that because we cannot be as we normally are or as we would like to be. Things trouble us. So I'd like us to all of us lift up our voices to Almighty God this morning. We don't have to shout because there's no shouting. But worship our God. Worship Him. Give him thanks. Open our hearts and express ourselves to him. At this time when we're looking at who am I and the God that we serve is saying, who am I? Open our mouths, church. Open our mouths now before the Lord and just lift up our hands and our voices and our hearts to in prayer. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Oh, the name of Jesus we praise. We glorify you, Lord. We stand in your presence now, Almighty God. And we lift up our hearts and our minds before you. We lift up our praises to you in the name of Jesus, for you are the God of our God. You are the King of all kings. You are our Father, our Savior, our Lord, our Redeemer, our everything, Jesus. We look to you, Lord. We look to you, Lord. This morning, we know that your presence is here, so we are here in this place. And God, as we come to worship you this morning, just be in our presence, Father. Accept our worship, accept our thanksgiving. Oh Lord, we put our burdens before you. We repent for whatever we have done wrong this week, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We ask you to forgive us, Lord. And we bring our burdens and we lay them at your feet, Lord. Whether it be our children, our husbands, our wives, our families, our work, our health, Finances, Lord Jesus, the situation of us. We put our governments before you, we put our ministers and leaders before you, we put our technicians, Lord, with the doctors and whoever those who are working on practices and everything, God, we put them before you now in the name of Jesus. But this world, Lord, needs you. And we pray in Jesus' name that we will stand, O oh Lord, and stand in the right way before you. We pray, O oh Lord, that we who are your people will stand down at this time through this pandemic, Lord, that the voice of the Christians will be heard and that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we will not bend. 
But God, in the name of Jesus, we will lift up our hands and our voices to you, and we will give you glory. And Lord, not for ourselves, but for our brothers and our sisters, that we will also bring them before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that as you look at us now, small in number to what we normally are, but Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus that the Church of Jesus Christ continues for you are in this with us. And your promise to us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And your promise already, Lord, that where we are, there you are also. God, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we just want to give you all praise, all glory, all honor. We say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 We're going to have um, two, uh, two um, scriptures read now. Can I ask Lillian and Chewie to come up, please? And um, our readings are taken from um, Exodus chapter 3 and verses 11 to 15 and also Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 to 17 which will be the text that our preacher will be using today. Um, but, Mo but Moses protested to God, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you and this is is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this holy mountain. But Moses protested, if I go to the people of Israel and tell them, the Lord of your ancestors have sent me to you, they will ask me, what is, it, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them then? God, God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you, God also said to Moses, "Say to this, to say this to the people of Israel: Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent you, has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations." The children will be reading from Matthew chapter sixteen, verses thirteen to seventeen. When Jesus came to the religion of Caesar Philip, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, You are blessed, Simon, son of John. Because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you, you did not learn this from any human being. Who am I? Where do I belong? I belong to Jesus. Who am I? I am a child of God. Who am I? I am loved and beloved. Who am I? I am healthy and wealthy and strong and beautiful. Uh, who am I? I am a child of God and I belong to Jesus. We are now going to have um, a pastoral prayer and um, you know we are we pray for ourselves and we know that but sometimes there are things that some of us um, feel that we want our pastor to pray from. As our shepherd, as our leader, it's only right that he has that headship over us, that he also is his responsibility to ensure that he takes us to God the Father in prayer. It's his responsi responsibility to ensure that he leads us um, in the right way. And so I'm going to ask him now to come and pray a pastoral prayer for, um, even though we pray for our leads, that he himself will uphold us um, before the Lord. So Pastor Parry, is going to ask you to come.
Uh, good morning. Good morning, church. Uh, before I um, pray, I just want to ask, acknowledge if there are any uh, visitors uh, amongst us uh, today. So if you're a visitor, just indicate by just uh, raising your hand. Great. Could you mind standing? We just want to celebrate with you. If you're a visitor, just come so you can just celebrate. Thank you for joining us today, and at some point one of the ushers will let you have some information so we can just be in, in touch with you and make sure that you're all right. I know that um, we've had some uh, students who've gone home and they've come back, and I don't see as many that was here last week, but uh, I just want to give them an opportunity. So if you've been uh, back home, but you're studying in Leeds and you're, you're back in God's house, do you mind just standing so we can acknowledge and give our thanks to you? Praise the Lord. Amen. I want us to remember that uh, the Bible puts it this way, that we are one. Uh, and, and when Jesus prayed in the high priestly prayer in the Gospel of John chapter 17, that's what he prayed. He prayed that the, the, the unity that will be amongst the followers of Jesus will be exactly the same as the unity between the Father and the Son. Now I want to uh, pray for you today, but I want you to activate the faith that's inside of you. Eh? Amen? Amen? Let my faith and your faith join together and God will do the job. So if you have a need and you believe Jesus is the answer, I'm going to ask you to pray. I mean, stand. Would you stand to your feet at this moment? Maybe you're standing for yourself. Maybe you're standing for a family member. Uh, maybe you're standing for a friend or a neighbor. But as you stand, what you are doing, you are indicating uh, that God has a remedy for that situation. Amen. Amen? Amen? So let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have a God that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. You know what we struggle with. You know when we have hard times. You know when we are in pain and we suffer. And you are concerned. Father, we even see that when uh, a friend of yours passed, you went to the sepulchre and you wept. So we know that you can feel like how we feel and we ask in the name of Jesus all those who have burdens today all those who are have trials today we take your word as truth and we cast our burden onto you right now in the name of Jesus those who are sick I ask for healing in the name of Jesus. And if I pray a prayer that touches you, I want you just to say amen as you receive it. Amen? amen. Those who are struggling and feel tied up, I pray that you would loose them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those who are down and, this kind of, and cast down, oh Father, I pray that you would lift them up in the name of Jesus. Those who are suffering because they have lost a loved one, someone close to them, Lord, and they're in the midst of mourning and despair, I pray that you would comfort their heart in the name of Jesus. Those who are struggling financially, oh God, and that we really don't know where the answer is, I thank you today that you can be the Jehovah Jireh and you will supply all of their needs according to your riches in glory. And Father, we receive that today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I command a blessing upon your people. Lord, as we draw close to you, we ask that you would use us to be salt and light wherever you placed us, hallelujah. To be salt and light in our families, to be salt and light on our street, to be salt and light in our workplaces, wherever you placed us, oh God, let us shine. Hallelujah. And Father, Lord, as we listen to what's all going around us, let us not be fearful, 
because we know that you are in charge and you are supreme and you transcend everything. So to you be the glory. Amen. To you be the honor. Amen. So we worship your name today, oh God. And Father, we just take time out right now just to thank you. If you receive anything from the Lord, just open your mouth and just thank Him. Hallelujah. If He's blessed you anyhow, just thank Him. If He's touched your body, just thank Him. If He's opened the door, just thank Him. If He's delivered you, just thank Him. Hallelujah. For His name is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the down setting of the sin. Is worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Just may have it in our hearts, in our minds this morning that we belong. We belong. It's so important that we know that we belong to the body of Jesus Christ. That we know that we belong to Jesus. We belong in the name of Jesus. And I want us to remind us of that, that we are here because we belong, because we are chosen. And I'm going to turn to um, Voices in Praise now. You know, we're so depleted in numbers um, that the choir is now to fall. But we are going to worship the Lord as we listen to the choir minister to us. Um, holy, holy, holy. Um, I just want to um, just read a scripture, sing from Psalm 59, verse 16. But I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud of them. Of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defence and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O oh, my strength, will I sing, for God is my defence and the God of my mercy. We just want to today just I know we can't we're restricted from singing, but we're gonna minister and we just want you to join in your hearts and your minds and just give God praise because He is due all the glory as we just sing.
one of the brothers of the church um, who's going to minister to us this morning. Who am I is what the theme is, and that's what she's going to be speaking about. And also, mother comes, and church, can please can ask us to stand up. Just Father, we can in the name of Jesus and Lord, we come giving you thanks, giving you praise, honouring your name. Lord, we come knowing that you are in this place and we just praise your holy name today. We praise your name, Jesus. And as our sister and mother of the church come to minister and to bring the word, we pray that our hearts are open to receive, that our minds are open, Lord, to take knowledge and understanding that you will be glorified and blessed, O oh Lord. And at the end of this um, sermon, Father, hearts will be touched, lives will be changed. And Father, in Jesus' name, we will leave knowing a little bit more about you and understanding a little bit more about the love and of the person of Jesus Christ. And Father, may those who are not in this building but are outside also be challenged today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. As we say, Mother, welcome, take your place. She would clearly be able to say who she is. 
She don't need no help. So Jesus had no problem with his identity. But, because, but he has been with these men from a, for a period of time. He has been with them. He called them when they were at work. They were busy men. They left, the sh they left their boat, their fishing nets, and they left the sea to custom. They left various things. And they followed Jesus. But here Jesus is asking them, you've been following me for a while. Whom do you say that I am? It's such a question. An answer is needed. Today Jesus is asking us the same. Do you really know me? You might clap your hand, you shake your hip, do your stuff. Jesus is saying, who am I? Oh, well, you're Jesus. That's a little bit flippant. Knowing him is knowing him. You know? It's not maybe he might do. But when you know him, you know who you believe, and you are really, really have no doubt that you know Jesus. Jesus wants to be sure that they know. They've been with his disciples. At the start of his ministry, they were there. Now he asks them, do you know who I am? It's a chilling question. If Jesus should come and he's here, and you could see him like you see me. And he said, do you know who I am? Do you really know who I am? Sometimes we become worried. We become fearful. And we're experiencing some experience. But do we know who he is? We go later on the, at the troubles and the, and the stress and the challenges that we face. Jesus saying, do you know who I am? A sleepless night and the tears that run from our eyes. Jesus said, do you know who I am to you? Who I am to the world? Do you know who I am? They were present. When Jesus spoke in his sermon on the mount, they were there. They, they saw him perform many miracles. So they should have an idea who Jesus is. But they said, his teaching concerning the kingdom, he spoke to them concerning conflict with religious leaders. Yet they still were there. There was no doubt. But here he asked them, Do you know? No, but who I am? We need to have a clear understanding of who Jesus is. If we don't, we will miss, we will miss benefits that are dear for our taking. If we don't have a clear understanding, then we end up complaining. Then we end up going to the doctor that can't sleep and needs some tablets. Why? Because we fail to acknowledge or to accept the authenticness of Jesus Christ. Oh, he's awesome. When you think about it, the God that we serve, the Jesus that has those presents, Christian, he's omnipresent. Hallelujah. He don't take time out. I get tired, I go to sleep. And I, when I sleep late, I said I don't borrow the bed. I don't, I'm not paying for it. I can stay in it as long as I want. But my Jesus don't take time out. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He knows everything we're talking about. Do you know who I am? He knows everything. He knows our thoughts. He knows you might be crying and I'm um, seeing those tears and I say to you, what is the matter with you? You gotta tell me. Are you gonna say, oh nothing, I'm all right. Jesus, 
is omniscient. He knows everything. He knows your heartbeat. He knows everything about us. We can't touch him. We can't hide him. Yeah. We can't hide him because he knows everything. What a God he said. He is omnipotent. He is all powerful. Do you know who he is? Do I really know who Jesus is? Hallelujah. Peter, they talk about it. Maybe. They were just trying to get it right. They were trying to get it right. But Peter answered in verse 50. Jesus answered that he was Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. G Peter gave the answer. Because I do know. Okay. And he did, and here we see Peter was able to give the answer that he's the Christ, that's the Son of the Living God. This need a touch from God. This love didn't come from Peter's knowledge. It didn't come from just off the top of the desk. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to him. Oh, blessed be God. But Jesus said unto him, But doubt Simon Peter, for flesh and blood is not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. To know Jesus, to experience his touch in this dark time in which we live, we need a revelation from God. We don't want to take everybody want a bit of news here and we want somebody to tell us here we've got the book. We've got the word of God. Get in it. Amen. Get on your knees. The word said the, the Holy Spirit. Jesus said I'll go but I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you a revealer of the truth. Instead of getting headaches and we get frightened we get worried. But he said fear not. Oh, blessed God, I'm with you. Fear not. Even at the dark night, I don't mean that night out there, I'm talking about the troubled time. Jesus is with us. We can confidently walk in it. I'm not saying we're going to do what the government has said we shouldn't do and mix and do all that stuff. But I'm talking about we can trust God. Late in the midnight hour, he's going to turn things around. All we got to do is just trust the Lord. He is. I ask you this afternoon, who do you say Jesus is? Think in yourself. Who do you at this time think Jesus is? Oh, he's a Savior, he's a Messiah. But it's more. Think deep. Don't be flippant with it. Get it deep in your soul. And then you know who he is. It humbles you. It humbles me. When we recognize the greatness of the awesome God, it humbles us. Oh, glory to God. It makes us. He's our safe in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And he shall save his people from their sin. He is our redeemer. He is our savior. He is our savior. You wonder who he is? No matter what you're going through, he's your savior. And I we run here and we run there. He's your savior. He's my savior. And he is our deliverer. Who do you say I am? What are you going through? Whatever your challenge is, he can, and he not only can, but we serve a God who will. Amen. He can, and he will. All you have to do is trust him. Hallelujah. Totally. And we will see the move of God. But I've been praying, trust him. Don't let go. Don't give up. No. Okay. He is our deliverer in Psalms 91 verse 3. Surely, 
he shall deliver us. He is. Sometimes we feel that here's the flock. Pastors are shepherd. But you know, and sometimes we just feel, one might feel left alone, something like that. But you don't have to worry. You can read it in Psalms 23, 1, John 1, John 10, 14. He is our shepherd. He watches over us. You know, we have lovely pastors and, and, and ministers and workers, but they can't be with us 24 hours. They can't. It's impossible. But you know something? The good shepherd. He's not an army. He's our good shepherd. Do you know who he is? He's your shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. He's our good shepherd. Do you know who I am? He said. He said, who do you say that I am? And when things get rough and get tough, he is your provider. I've been there, and I know what it is to have it rough, tough. But He is our provider. What a God that we serve. Philippians 4, verse 19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to your riches, is riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Whatever your need is, whatever it is in your heart, He's saying, do you know who I am? He's your provider. You can put the pot on and you can make it start boiling. Somebody will knock your door. You never know the God you serve. Somebody will have to tell you about that. Some of us will have to tell you. I was talking to my young daughter and we were sharing the blessing of the Lord yesterday and she says, this lady was they were about to, to about to lose her home and all they had was 200 pounds and the lady needed 200 pounds and her home was also in jeopardy when she went in bankruptcy and she just didn't know what to do but the lady needed it and she would lose her house she gave the woman the 200 pounds knowing she got nothing left to feed her and her, her husband and her children and she gave it. But then, all of a sudden, she heard from the bank manager. We got some money left here for you. 10,000 pounds. <laughs> 10,000 pounds from 200 pounds. What a God! That's the God we serve. And if we can trust him, we will see miracles in our life. That's her story. I've got one too, and I'm sure you've got one. When God turned upon time. Isn't that true? We've got one when he turned upon time. He's our provider. God shall supply our needs. You ever feel ill? He's your healer. Come on now. He is your healer. He's your deliverer. So many. I tell you something, Pastor here. He's here to pastor us. He's not a doctor. He don't want no clinic. He don't want no clinic, no surgery here. He is our healer. But there's so much things that are happening. The enemy is rolling up and throwing at us. But the deliverer is here. Sister Bernie here will tell you she is known as my doctor, my daughter from the doctors. And Bernie will tell you. We went to the doc to the hospital and they were saying, I'm having surgery. I went home, I said, God, if they cut me from top to bottom, I got nobody to look after me. Daddy's gone home to be with you. I'm all on my own. And then we were to go back to hear the date of the surgery. I made a joke with her in the car. What the, what the consultant would be saying. When we got there, he said, no surgery. Amen. Then he was so happy. He said, 
surgery, what for? The three main arches of my heart is blocked. And it's still blocked. And the Bernie says, so, is the artery still blocked? She spoke to the consultant. He said, yes. But there's sufficient blood getting to the heart. We won't be doing surgery and we won't be giving her a step. Bernie was waiting for me to jump up and shout hallelujah. And she says, I told you we're going to do that. I said, I was so shocked. He said, no surgery. The heart, to, the three main arteries to my heart are still blocked. But here I am, praising the Almighty God because He lives. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. And if He doesn't come through in time, you remember that when you go through the waters, He's there. You go to the rivers and to the flood. And when you go to the fires, it's going to burn your king upon you. You have to come out on the other side. Do you know who you serve today? He is your healer. With his, we are healed with his strife. Psalm Isaiah 53, 5. Only our hope, only hope, our only hope is for a better tomorrow. And no matter where you are, no matter what your, your, your situation, our God, our Christ is there for you. I am not executing it in, uh, um, um, in every way to say God this, God can do. But he is God. Who is he? It would be, I would find it impossible, even with more time, to exhaust the Christian. I tell you, give, give you all the mind, you give this wonderful preacher the mind, and they will take it someplace. I have not taken it. But I want to say, I will, it will be impossible for me. Who am I? Take time. Let us take time and search the word of God diligently. Whatever is your need today, Jesus is a total rounded God. When dad was here, that would have called him the all prayer. Those who don't know him, that was my good husband. He's gone. <laughs> He's gone to be with the Lord in heaven. He would have said, He's the all prestigious God. All that we need is in him. He's totally rounded. Who can and will supply all our needs? He loves you. He loves me. And hear about what concerns. Whatever your concern is today, he is concerned about it. Let us stand. If you want, let me finish. As an indication, you have a request for this God who say, Oh, am I? You can stand. Whatever your need, you don't I have to tell me what's your need. You know what you need, and you can stand. If you're not well, and some joints hurting you or something, if you're concerned about your family, whatever. God can, not only that he can, you know, God will. Because there's a lot of people who can do something, but they don't do it. A lot of people, they can help you, they don't help you. But God don't only can, but God will. I'm going to ask us to stand at this time. The Hebrew poets would use the phrase Shema, uh, and it means just pause, don't rush on. To use a Caribbean colloquialism, let it sort, man. <laughs> We've heard some things about who God is and who we are. 
in God. In this season of fear, everywhere we look there's fear. We need to know who God is. And we need to know who we are in God. I'm going to ask um, Pastor William to come and pray for all of us. Because we will all have seasons where we focus on the storm and not the creator. So I'm going to ask him to pray for all of us. And after he prays, I want to come back with an uh, announcement. But Pastor William is going to come and pray for us that we will know who he is and know who we are. So it's very important that we understand who God is. First of all, he said to his disciples, Who do men say that I am? But the most important question was, Who do you say that I am? And it's important for each one of us in here that we know who God is. Not who others tell us he is, but who we know he is for ourselves. Amen. And when you know that, you will truly begin to have a proper relationship with Almighty God. Amen. So let us pray. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you. Father, we know who you are. You are our provider. Hallelujah. You are our peace. You are our redeemer. You are our savior. You are our helper. You are our protector, almighty God. Father, you are more to us than we know and we can ever think. And so we lift our hands and we give you thanks. Father, this day, I pray a blessing upon your people. Father, as they go through all the things that have been brought about by this uh, uh, virus, Lord. The isolation, oh Father. The lack of work, Almighty God. Father, the lack of uh, social interaction with family and friends, Almighty God. I pray you would be with them, Lord. Because you said even if we go through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, you are with us, Almighty God. And so, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your presence. Because if it had not been for your presence, Lord, we wouldn't be here today. So, Lord, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, I pronounce a blessing upon your people here in this building, upon all those who are listening, Almighty God, that you would reveal yourself to them, that they may know who you are, Lord, and come to know you as Lord and Savior. We give you thanks, Almighty God, and we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. That's right, let's give him praise, let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. He's all together lovely. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and iron star. He's the real within the real. He's your rock, he's your hiding place. He's your everything. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it hadn't been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask you to be seated just for a moment. Don't worry, we're not going to go over time. We're scheduled to finish at uh, 12.15. I just want to thank everyone for uh, taking part in the service today. And I uh, want to thank our moderator, Sister Paley. She's Sister Paley. She's the Lord, Sister Paley. Sister Bernie, come on, come on, you that together. We want to thank uh, our choir as they minister so beautifully. Praise the Lord, thank you. 
the four of you stay there, did all your parts. I was going to help the tenor, but we're not the tenor. Can we show our appreciation? The musicians, thank you. They made us feel like we're home again. And the ushers and the wardens who make sure that we're safe, thank you. The technicians at the back of the media team, do you know that we're just people to our appreciation. And to Mother Baby for giving us that wonderful word. And for all of you, Amen. for you are my brother and you are my sister, oh, and I love you. Amen. God keep you, God bless you. Amen. I just wanted to give a, a brief notice to our church members, and that is we were scheduled to have a members meeting on Monday the 19th of October at 7 o'clock. We are still having a members meeting. It's not going to be here, it's going to be done virtually. Um, similar to the church conference we had several months ago. It's going to be shorter, but we want to hear from our members. We know that it's been really hard, especially for our, our elders and our senior citizens, and those who may um, be widows or widowers and by themselves and this long, long period of being alone. We know that it's really been hard. And one of the things we want to do, we want to hear from you, we want to hear uh, those stories, but we want to also do something about it. Anybody want to help and do something about that? Yeah. That's yeah. Pastor Pastor. Yeah. You, did, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. So I'll say it again. Anybody want to help to be part of the solution? Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It's a really you, you just kind of kick, you just hold it back. What pastor want me to do now anyway? <laughs> One of the things that we want to suggest and put in place is a body system where we would link someone up with someone who's by themselves. So if they are ever really alone, they know they have someone that they can contact and won't feel in the way about them contacting and someone that will just be there to listen and to share a body up system. So if you are willing uh, to be a body to someone, and I don't want you to tell me, I want to be a body to over there or over there, just willing to be a body to someone, someone who needs it, let us do the matching up. But if you're willing, I want you to, thank <laughs> you for the girl, praise God. I, w I want you to let us know, uh, and maybe through the, the church office, um, or if you've got any other ideas of how we can help those who are feeling really, really low at this time. And we know that um, progressive the period of isolation will affect their mental health and well-being. If you've got any other ideas of how we can help, bring that to the, the members' meeting. Will you do that? So we'll send that through uh, the uh, WhatsApp group, we'll send it through the uh, emails, the details of that meeting. It won't be long, long, long meeting, um, but um, we want everyone to be participate if they possibly can. If you don't know the details, if you contact the office, they can pass that on to you. So that's the notice. It's an important one. Just to remind you, we are family. I said we are family. So when someone is hurting, all of us hurt. Yeah, sure. So we need to do what we can to yeah. watch over each other. Yeah. God bless you. Let's stand for the benediction. So Father, we thank you for today. And we thank you for the word. And we thank you for the worship. Now I command a blessing upon your people. As they leave this place, Lord, let them leave on fire for you. Because they know who you are. And they know in whom they believe and whom they put their trust. So I ask that the grace of God will be upon your people. That your mercy will be their portion now and always. And all God's people say, Amen, amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.